Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, regulars. Welcome to uh, today's regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Today is uh, Monday, October 24th, 2022. Please call to order at 631. The first thing up this morning, this afternoon, this evening, is the approval of the minutes from September 19th. I motion we approve the minutes of September 19th. Set September 19th. Wow, September 19th. Mm, I think it was October like 3rd. Yeah, like that. I think that's wrong. I think it was the 3rd, I'm sorry. October 3rd? It, it would be October 3rd. That's the folder. Yeah, the last one. No, thank you. Motion October 3rd. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded for the minutes, to approve the minutes of October 3rd as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, 3-0. New business at uh, 630. I'd like to open. So you have a uh, notice that you sent out and everything? Did you have to put in the paper or no? No. Uh, the law was changed so that you only had to post a regular meeting 48 hours in advance. Okay. And you had that and been legally posted? Yes. Okay. So at 630, we have a tax classification here with the assessors. Take it away, assessors and assessor's clerk. All right, uh, so for this year, um, fiscal 23 values increased approximately 16% for residential over fiscal 22. Uh, we had an approximate 15% increase for commercial, industrial, and personal property values. Um, the increase in that was partially due to uh, over $3 million in new growth from uh, NSTAR, which was listed on their form of list that they have to file every year. Um, as usual, the board recommends a single tax rate for all classes of property, uh, no open space discount, as we don't have any open space, uh, no residential exemption, and uh, no small commercial exemption. All right, so residential values from FY23, $470,772,500 versus residential values of FY22 of $393,762,700 and commercial, uh, industrial, 52 million, of this FY23 of $52,636,085. And 22, we had 44, almost $45 million. So our total valuation of the town is first time ever of over a half a billion dollars. That would be Five hundred twenty-three million four hundred eight thousand five hundred eighty-five dollars. It must have been all those renovations going on at Bubs Barbecue Assessors. Okay, so make sure you tax them appropriately. A lot of it also was sales-driven. Um, of course, our sales analysis was for the period of uh, July first, twenty, through June thirtieth of twenty twenty-two. And at that time, everyone you know, was paying way more than the asking price, um, and uh, interest rates were so low, and I think, and um, so people were just paying astronomical numbers over the asking price. So, and unfortunately, that drives the values in town. So, um, so right now, everyone's kind of <coughs> suffering from all the overbuyers. Oh, understood. I see it in the three towns that I work for. I see it in every town that I'm there. I really, all the values are increasing this year because of the sales. Understood. Okay. So I see the assessors are recommending a uh, one tax rate, single tax rate? Yes. Any discussion? So this is the same as it would have been previously then? What's that? This is the same recommendation as, as yes. previous years. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. nothing's um, changing basically. Yeah, we don't have enough commercial base to go with a split tax rate. Yeah. So. Okay, great. Thank you. That's it. Sure. Okay. Um, anything else, assessors? Want to add anything else? Uh, we 
we had pretty good new growth uh, this year. Um, total new growth of the year was 29 million, 829, um, which we'll probably never see again. Um, the vast majority of that was 653 Amherst Road, um, that new apartment complex, uh, which was now at 100% complete. That alone was 25 million in new growth. So but I, I told Jeff, don't look for that every year. <laughs> so, but that you know, helps out our budget. Right? Yeah, they were just, it wasn't too long ago, they were just resold again, right? It was like 47 million or something like that? In January, yeah. Um, they actually, I think they paid 52 million, and I think we have an assessed around 47 million, and they called asking when the payment period is. <laughs> it's like, you know, we, you know, you paid 52 million and we're assessing you at 48 and you're looking for an abatement. So, I don't know, that'd be interesting. <laughs> So, so there's a couple different ways that you can assess them, right? You can look at what what they're actually taking in. Yeah, there's the income um, way. There's the uh, sales way, which isn't how we did it. And the, uh, I, I think this one was was uh, we had Roy Bishop is our uh, the person that does the. Uh, going out and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, doing that. So he's the one that kind of handled that. Um, I believe he did the income approach, but I'm not positive. I'd have to look at my notes. I'm pretty sure he did the income approach. Yeah. We talked about um, <coughs> you know, parking spaces and uh, laundromats yeah. and you know, money that people spend that are in the, the um, development. And I'm pretty sure he did the income approach. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just interesting because there's really no no comparable sales, no sales right or cost approach. Um, the income approach is used. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I do. it's just to me, it's just interesting, Jim. Is when you look at it because you see some of their ads that they have around. They lease. They don't. You know, before they would lease an apartment, but now it's not an apartment. They're they're leasing beds. Mm -hmm. So. I, I just think it's 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 different. So, you know, their 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 business practice is different than what we've seen in the past. So, just wondering. Okay. Yeah, All right. that's pretty much what we got. All right. So, uh, the assessors are recommending a single rate. Uh, so, Jeff, we, what do we need for for motion? Um. They also need to vote on the discounts, right? Uh, the open space, the... Yeah, the so basically, program. you so, uh, do four separate votes. One is to do a single tax rate, and then um, the other ones would be to vote um, not, uh, no open space discount, no residential exemption, and then the fourth one is no small commercial exemption. Give that to oh, instead of me, I've got it right here in front of me. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'll entertain a motion. All right. So I'm motion that we go with a single tax rate, no open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. Second. Okay, we have a motion made, seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero, single tax rate, no open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. Thank you, Sessers. Thank you. See you next year. <laughs> yes, you will. It seems like they come around pretty quick. It oh, seems like you were just why? here. Can I just sit here for a minute? You can, can sit, sit there as long as you want. want. You want to talk to us, too? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, we're not going we're anywhere yet, We're here for yet, probably an hour or more. Okay, it's good to see you guys. You too. We'll see you in a month. <laughs> okay. Um, One, two, three, up. <laughs> she needs some help. The uh, general election warrant. Jeff? This is, this is, this is what happens yes. when you get old. That's um, right. I, do we have coffee to that? Or? Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. Do you want to look at them? I just want to go. Okay.
it looked the whole, the whole That's all right. They saw not my best part either. Okay, the election warrant, Jeff? Yeah, so the election warrant was prepared by the town clerk. It includes the ballot question and the candidates for uh, state offices. Okay. Uh, enter entertain a motion to approve the general election warrant. I motion we approve the general election warrant. This one. Second. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? And again, one of these little these are one of these little things that the town clerk does to keep us out of jail. So Good job, Wen. <laughs> all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero Jeff. Um the acceptance of anonymous donation for Riverside Park maintenance. Yes. The town received a donation of sorry, I don't have it in front of me. I think it was ten thousand dollars, right? Five. Five thousand, I'm sorry. Five thousand dollars. Um and the anonymous resident asked that it be used for maintenance at Riverside Park trails and pathways um, to help support the the town's budget for the for the park. So so you're going to set you're going to have the treasurer set up a gift fund. fund. Yep. Uh, we actually already have a Riverside Park gift fund. Yep. So I think there's going to be technically a sub account under that um, for this gift particularly. Okay. So do we need do we have a policy on how money is taken out of the fund? Um, we have a letter with the donor's request, um, but it wasn't more specific than uh, Riverside Park maintenance. So can I ask that we put up a, uh, something for um, a kind of a policy letter for that also? Okay. And, and, and that just so something that we can tie to it so that we can kind of um, memorialize the wishes of the uh, donor? Absolutely. Okay, so, you know, I mean, you can actually think out outside the box a little bit, you know, we, we had talked about at one point a long time ago about making, if somebody wanted to donate a tree with a memorial, you know, we could have like a, 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 a memorial tree area or walkways or, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's some, some things that we should pay for. The town when I say we I mean the town but I also think you know donations like this should help uh, maybe help pay for things that um, maybe a little bit different but they would add to the park as well okay okay yep. so let's see what we can do with that Jeff all right Absolutely. all right so uh, do we need to vote on accepting the yep we're going to um, it, so I accept a uh, Enter, I would entertain a motion to accept the uh, donation with a uh, uh, policy letter to be put in place with the treasurer. Okay. I motion we accept the donation of $5,000 for the Riverside Park Pathways Park Check. Gift Fund. Yep. And a letter to be drafted by Jeff. Seconded. Okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor? of acceptance of the donation, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero on that. Solid, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District Point Board appointment. Yes. Uh, we got an email from, from Jan. the director. Yep. Um, saying that their board was short of members and asking if Sunderland wanted to appoint somebody um, either from the select board or the energy committee or elsewhere to their board of directors. So she said she had my name on there. I can, she said she had Tom's name on there in her letter. Yeah. I can tell you I've never attended a solid waste committee district <clears throat> meeting. Do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, cause I think Jan does on, I, I think we, we, 
but we've had people in the past. I thought last our last person to serve in that position was Dan Murphy, I think. Um, so if we if we you know at if we could just ask that uh, Cindy just check the roles to make sure that we don't have an, uh, a warm, I mean, an active member uh, that would like to participate in that. Andrew, where do you live? <laughs> but. <laughs> um, Is anyone from the Energy Committee interested? Did you ask them? I wanted to get your opinion. I, I'd imagine that they would, given their interest in the transfer station. Right, and that's why I was wondering if somebody from there was interested or if we wanted I, I to just think select board. Jan, Jan and her group, the Solid Waste, has done an amazing job over the years. I mean, they helped us a lot when we used to have the, uh, back when we paid for, you know, paid for, paid for throw for the trash. Mm -hmm. Um, helping us with the bags and getting bags and uh, helping us with our when we had bulky item days and all those and then we had all kinds of bags that we needed to get um, get rid of and she found a, another town to buy the bags. so I mean there Jan's been amazing in the whole Franklin County and I don't think Sunland residents realize that Sunland is part of the Franklin County or fan whatever we call it, solid waste district and you have the right to go up to the Greenfield transfer station and you can leave stuff off there you know if you have, want to get rid of a rug or a washing machine or a sofa or whatever you can go up there and for five bucks to they have a price schedule for everybody and you would pay five more dollars because you're of the district and not a town member of Greenfield but for five bucks in addition you get rid of a couch or construction debris or whatever so I would just go on their site so yeah let's just make sure there's no one that that we just ha have failed to uh, appoint okay okay All right. bring it back next week next, next week. week is fine yep um, okay so we have a poll here in at seven so we can, I believe we can start talking. I don't, because we have a thing at seven, we do have to, if we're not done with the uh, bubs, we'd have to stop, okay? So, but we can try, we can try to get it done. All right, so at this point, let's, uh, cause we don't have anything that says we have to hold a public hearing, so it's not a public hearing. It is a discussion about an entertainment license for bubs. So should we start by reading the letter that we received? Sure. Who's our clerk? Do you want to read it? Or? Okay. All righty. This is dated October 16th, 2022. Dear Sunderland Select Board, having received your letter yesterday regarding bubs barbecue and their application for an entertainment license, I am writing to you with my concerns. I am, deeply, I am deeply opposed to Bubba's being granted such a license. You have already given them a liquor license and a reason for people to hang out longer. If you have music there, the amount of people drinking will go up. This road is dangerous enough without making it worse. This is a state highway and parking on it is prohibited. I'd like to know where cars from 78 people are going to park. Yesterday, I, was, uh, I counted 17 cars in their parking lot and it was about full. Where would the overflow park? Regular traffic flies by my house. How can you have drunken people walking on this road to their cars? Safety is a real concern. Then there's the noise. This summer on Wednesday, they, the question mark old owners, had live music outside until only 8 p.m. and the sound traveled perfectly into my house. I heard enough of Jimmy Buffett's music to last a lifetime. Why should I have to close my windows to muffle the sound? I like fresh air in my house and AC is expensive to run all the time just to try and block the music. Are the police going to sit in the gas station and monitor bubs? The students walk from the apartments to bubs. They cross whenever and whenever they want. Now they can sit and drink and stumble down the road back home. By granting them an entertainment license, it will be an accident waiting to happen. Three nights a week until 10 p.m. is really unfair to me and my neighbors to have to put up with. Please, please take my concerns into consideration when deciding on Bub's application. I'm sure you wouldn't want this happening next door to you. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, should I read the person's name? Is it public record, I assume? 
it's a public record, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Susan Redmond, 666, sorry, 667 Amherst Road, Sunderland. Okay, so we did receive one comment. Um, Jeff, you also went out with the chief, and what, what, what was your... Uh... Yeah, I, I think we had a, a good conversation. Um, we toured the outdoor and the indoor place. Uh, Mr. Garlo showed us all around. Uh, under the tent, um, the, the short answer is I think that, that we're all, the town, the police are on the same page as far as we want to empower our businesses to be successful um, and balance that with, you know, making sure that, that everybody is safe and, and it's not um, a nuisance to residents. So, you know, we discussed where the lo location of music would be, what type of music, um, you know, it was what I heard and, and feel free to correct me was, you know, one to three people um, playing acoustically in the southwest corner sort of projecting towards the northeast. Um, so that would be so, yeah, from, the, from where almost like where uh, the corner of the tent is on the side towards the road facing towards the building where the back sheds are. So wouldn't it be facing this direction instead of It'll be facing out into the field behind you? Yes. Yeah. Versus facing versus out facing into facing the road. The road yeah. So uh, we also talked about parking and how there's a mode area off the highway that can fit cars as well for parking. Um, and then you saw Mr. Was also talking about this weekend. I, yeah. I didn't realize, but there's a there's a whole mode section in the back too that might be for seating or parking, but also potentially overflow parking area um, that's underutilized right now on the property. So, so I, I believe, and I'm sure Jeff will correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Your beliefs are correct. <laughs> but safety, safety, we can consider safety as part of our decision-making process, right? Yeah, the, uh, yes. Can we consider noise? Yeah, you can, you can consider whatever you like. This is for the select board to determine what is in the best interest of the community. Well, my, my only problem, and, and this, is, this, is, this is where you could give an Andrew, Andrew, Andrew could, Andrew could be the best, most outstanding uh, business owner in the world. Andrew could be the man from the on the moon. I have no idea. But once you grant a license, right, for an entertainment license, is the next people that hold that license, do they are they subjected to the same rules or can they say, well, there is a, a entertainment license in place, so we're just applying for an entertainment license. It's an annual license, so if you granted one tonight, it would expire on December 31st. Um, my understanding, and I can confirm that, is that if you put conditions on that license, I will confirm that they are printed on the license. Um, I don't see a reason why, if on January 2nd you said, hey, this condition doesn't, it doesn't make sense anymore, or whenever you're doing the renewal, um, changing the conditions, but it's an annual process, so every year a new owner or a new operator would have to uh, apply for the entertainment license. So, so how, do we, how do we address the issues about pedestrian and vehicular safety on 116 coming in and out of the parking lot? Now, so, so I travel that road, just so you know, Andrew, I, go, I work at the university, so I drive that road all the time. Any, many hours of the day, yeah. right? It's dark in that area, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what if um, the concern that was written about people walking on the road? There's no sidewalks there, right? I don't think. 
No. no right? There's not not, until, not until down there. Like that crosswalk, which is next to the gas station. Next to the right. bus stop. And, yeah, and then they, then they put then when they put the apartments and they put a crosswalk across um, one six plum, tr- plum tree that went to no goes to nowhere. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was perfect. <laughs> so so how so 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 how how do we address the concerns of this person about people walking along the road where we got a high rate of speed? How 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 do we address that, Andrew? So, I can say better lighting in the Bob's parking lot area, um, which I've already considered because it is a very dark and you can't see, when at night you can't really see how to get in or out. So there's like middle island in the middle. So I've already talked to a friend of mine about lighting in that area, but off property. I mean, I know. Put like a light post there or I mean, if I, if I, some kind of street light. If I may, I, I, I don't know that this issue is directly tied to the entertainment license either. I think that it's a, a issue that exists just in general, especially with the new apartments being there. There's going to be more foot traffic going not just to his property, but also to the gas station. People going to get snacks at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's dark out. It might be a question that the, uh, that the town wants to consider in terms of putting in a traffic or a you know, street light there or another crosswalk or something along those lines. Um, but I'm not entirely sure that to the point of the letter and to the point of the, of the meeting today that whether or not he has the entertainment license is necessarily going to ch- change the already potentially dangerous situation that is trying to cross in the dark there. Those are good points, I think. I don't know if I agree um, because I, I think as a, a, a board that grants licensing, those are things that we have to or should consider that that Will it increase what's already there? I think for traffic. I, well, I, I, it, I worry. I go back to the original problem I had. That was unfortunately the judicial supreme court of the state of Massachusetts never, never had the, never had a true discussion about is the safety of the peop, people on that road. You know, they, they, they just, well, 40B was allowed by right because that's the law. And it's like, well, no, let's just talk about 116 and the, and the safety of, and, and during, I, I, unfortunately, I've, I've known two people that, that got hit and died on that road. And Crystal knows them too. And so I know it's a dangerous stretch. I know it's a dangerous stretch of highways. Um, so, and I, and I know what we did on 116 by Frontier Pizza is that we did, a, you know, we upgraded the lighting, the state upgraded the, um, speed limits got changed, lighting got changed, it got made wider, the bus pull-offs were further yeah, and, back. And, and the bus, the bus pull, actually the bus pull-offs were donated by a local business. So... I, I, I do think, trust me, you don't want you don't want to see mom and dad come in when your son or daughter has been hit by a car, because we have. And so I, I, I do take I, I do think that we should consider safety. And may, maybe you're right, Nathaniel. Maybe the town maybe the town should take a more active, proactive role in doing something about it. Um, Right, because some of those safety concerns are outside of your hands, right? Yeah. You can't control someone parking across the street because your parking lot's full and thinking they're going to run across the street yeah. and get in there and sing karaoke. Yeah. But it's it's a potential safety concern, right? Because mm-hmm. there's it can happen. Oh, I mean, yeah. people aren't going to... Not everyone knows that you can't park on a state highway. Yeah. It's, you know, I don't know what can be done about signage and things yeah, like so that. We had talked to the chief that mentioned, I'm actually calling this week, is calling the Mass DOT to get signs on the highway saying no parking. Uh, yeah. Boxes. Yeah. So that'll hopefully deter people parking on that. And then there's the grass pull off area, which um, eventually that sign that's there now. That's going to get moved back to the center where it originally was, 
and there'll be an area where they can pull in and park on that grass area. That way, it'll be an easier. How many down. cars will fit on that grass area, roughly? Uh, I would, I don't know, twenty to thirty. And how many do you think you're parking? Because this this woman, you know, or in this letter it said 17 and it was almost full. What do you think your parking lot actually holds? I would say another 20 to 30. 47 cars in your parking lot? Well, Existing 20, parking lot 20 now? 20 to 30 inside the parking lot and then in that grass pull-off area. Okay. That's if everybody parks properly. Yeah. And there's no, I mean, there's no lines. Right, because it's a dirt, dirt parking yeah. lot. Yep. So right. that's one concern. So, so I think one thing I'd like to see is just, can we have a diagram of that, the parking? Did you have? So, so one, so just so we can have a diagram, okay, yeah. Andrew, yeah. about how, how, um, and in lighting that you would be responsible going in and out of the thing if because you, you said you're working on that right yeah. Yeah. all right so that's something that's in in your control mm -hmm. have we talked to the state about 116 about about no. plans nope can we do that please sure. and see if if they'd be willing to look at um Sidewalks. Uh -huh. I think I think part part of this is I, I think that the, the impetus for this becoming more of an emergent emerge like a, an actual issue has much less to do with bubs and any of the businesses as does the fact that we now have an apartment complex within walking distance of these places. And so yeah, I think that you know the, that that's a separate conversation to this meeting about how can we as a town make that make that safer in general for everybody. Um, and then to the other point in the letter the noise and whatnot. Unfortunately, our town has so little commercial property, there really isn't any commercial property in town that's not going to be an earshot of somebody. And so the question is, do, do we curtail commercial interests in town because of that, or do we have to have it be a necessary evil of having well, commercial properties in town? I, I would say it, we, we, we'd address it the same way we have addressed uh, commercial property that abuts private property all along. So Senauer, when Senauer first moved into Plum Tree Road, um, we, in the bylaws, we have things in the bylaw that specify that you, uh, lighting can't be, can't wash out into, you know, the surrounding residency, that typically if you put up a fence between, between um, the um, commercial and the residential area so that you don't, you don't, uh, um, you know, the commercial doesn't, you, we look at ways that if you have vehicles moving in and out, loading docks would be on the commercial side versus the residential side. So yeah, there's ways that you can help mitigate um, commercial being next to residential. Sure, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we have through our bylaws. You know, and and there there has to be an understanding. If you if you own a property next to a commercial <coughs> district, you may have you may have you know lights, but there's also expectation that you're probably going to have a fence to keep that you know light on that property. You've done that before in Amherst, right? Yep. C commercial. I mean, you can make up you. And and a prime example is right here on. School Street, because there's commercial on School Street and there's residential. So how do you get how do you get the two to coexist? Those those are things that we struggle with all the time. Yeah, but you can do it. Um, so I guess the, the big question with the, this entertainment license and with this letter is, is the entertainment license going to make these things worse? Um, I mean, I know when I was in high school, we used to the whole football team used to go to Bubs and probably had a higher decibel rating at that point than any of the acoustic music he's going to have has. And so is this already a concern for neighbors? Is it going to get exacerbated by the, by this? Is it going to be undue on anybody? Or is this going to be something that's within the acceptable limits of a commercial a commercial adjacent property? I, I just I, I just worried about bathrooms. Do you have do you have the sanitary facilities to handle, ex, you know, and again, I, I haven't talked to the Board of Health. I, I mean, 
I don't know what's required or required for, you know, if all of a sudden if you have 40 more cars or if, does, do they have the f present facilities that can handle that? I don't know. That, you must have checked into that, right? Do you have enough I, bathroom I, space? I asked, I asked Steve, he said everything's all set. Unless we do like, a, I mean, right now we're doing 100 to 150 people a day on like a Saturday coming through that building. So, right, so 100 to 150 a day yeah. is different than 80 people at the same, same time, time. Yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, I talked to Steve and he said it's all set. I've also mentioned porta potties on the property. Expanding the bathrooms out if need be. Um, but so, so one of the things that we've always done is, and we're we're transitioning, Andrew. So just bear with us. Is that when 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 we're talking to the various, you know, police and fire and board of health, and we usually get them to write a letter to to you know, and and that's one of the things that okay so can you have so, so one of the options I, I could see would be approving a provisional and attainment license rather than the full year be like a three-month license with the terms we that are asked and then we can revisit in three months and then go permanent or make adjustments because we've had X number of complaints from neighbors or we've had you know, this many police officers having to be called out for whatever reason or whatever the concerns are, that would give, I think, some peace of mind to the neighbors that it's not, you're locked into this for a year before there's a chance to, you know, revisit it. And, and I, I just want, I, I, I would just, if possible, what, what, what I would, I, what I would suggest, we'd still, we're still doing that because, we're, I mean, it's October, so it's only going to be a couple months right now anyways and I don't know how many people are going to be outside listening to music in <laughs> November December so I think we, we have a little time but but I, I think I'd like to go I'd like to go back to to kind of the way you know put a plan in front of us with and, and, and address the concerns that that we that we have and I, I think Andrew's I think Andrew understands exactly where we're coming from. It's not. I, I think we just want to get everything in place so that when you know the license is granted, it's something that all of us are going to live with. Now, are you planning on having heaters out there and going late into the season? <clears throat> uh, yeah. So I, I got to the fire department still um, about how to heat the tent safely. I'm unsure, so I haven't done anything yeah. yet, just because. The tall propane meters are going to be too big to yeah. fit there. The little ones on the ground are going to be too unsafe for kids running around. And yeah. So I got to talk to the fire chief and see what his ideas would be and the best way to do it. Yeah. Right. So how far into the year are you planning on going? Like all year round under the tent? Yeah, or? we'll see how it goes. I mean, my plan was kind of see how it goes. If it's too cold out and we're not getting anybody, then I would think, all right, we're not going to do it anymore. Kind of, kind of yeah. See what, the, what people kind of want to do. Right, and just, you know. Yeah, because tens We're also trying to think of ways to to get through this without yeah. it being a huge expense for you and us going, yeah, that didn't really work. Let's yeah. try something else because oh, yeah. obviously heaters and all those things become expensive. Yeah, because I still want to be able to keep the tent, even if there's not music out there, because the restaurant's not big enough as it is. It's a very small, intimate place. So to have extra seating available for people that... Maybe don't want to sit inside. They want to sit away from people or whatever. They have that space. Oh, I there. think sitting on the porch is about as far away as I want to get in the winter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the gold. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, it, so, in, in, and again, it's no different than we talked to the other groups that have entertainment license. It'd be nice to look at um, the the hours of operate specific hours of operation. The uh, number of people, uh, I think, with a tent, we're gonna. Andrew's gonna find out that the tents, they're pretty. Their age is. Like, like I learned, you can't have an old tent. It's like seven years, ten years, and that's it, and they gotta yeah. be replaced, right? I mean, there's a whole thing about tent, and then about heating. You're gonna end up with a. Uh, um, 
propane fired with diesel fuel blowers and yeah. like a fire pit in the middle. Uh, oh, geez, yeah. yeah I yeah. we we've seen them and 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 it's in how to keep the pro you know make sure that the uh, the heaters is secured so it doesn't fall over and blah blah blah. Yeah. We we do that all the time. Um, but so Jeff, if we could do that and just work with Andrew to put together a package that we can see at our next meeting, I think would be appropriate. And and if we can talk to district too and see see if they have a concern, you know. And and again, I just I just don't want to see anybody hurt. Uh, that's you know safety safety is you know I can't stress it enough because I I've seen the aftermath of and and Nathaniel's right I mean it's not Bub's problem per se but but additionally going people going in and out we we do we should at least consider it okay um, is that okay Andrew yeah is there a possibility to get the copy of that letter. Absolutely. It could be scratched out, all that stuff can be scratched out. I just want to have yeah. a letter um, everything that we everything that we have is public document, so and if you ever want to see see if you get sued and then all of your records are just and the lawyers come in and they just start copying pages and file cabinets full yeah. of stuff. Well we went we did have a school roof that fell in on one time and I would, it never seemed fair to me, but it ended up working out okay for us, yeah. so um, but they came in and they had a truckload of people and copiers and and phew. so yeah, all, it's all doc, it's all public documents. Absolutely. You've had nobody come to your business and ask to talk to you about any of this. Don't yeah, worry. all right. No. no, just curious. No, everybody, every customer that's come in, we mentioned that you know we're looking to get life insurance license. Everyone's like, oh, that's great. We can't wait. You know, yeah. it'd be great to have like live music in the town because some of the other bars they have it, but it's not. The, the people seem to go to. They don't want to go to that certain place or this other place, so they're like, oh, another place, a new place is going to have yeah. something going on in the town. So it's a lot of excitement, a lot of people are like, oh, it's going to be great, I can't wait. So, yeah, nothing, no naysaying yet. <laughs> good. Until the surprise today. <laughs> you have a good supply of applewood? No, I haven't. <laughs> it still comes from my yard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Apple and maple right now. What's that? Apple and maple. The two I'm getting right now. When I was down in Georgia, boy, they, they thought I was a lucky guy because I could get maple. Really? Sugar. Oh, yeah. They can't get sugar. They, no, nothing down there. They have peach. They have. And then down in Texas, I was just down in Georgia, uh, Missouri, and it was white oak and post oak. And I said, really? And the guy said, well. And I said, you. Oh, that's what I was right. Yeah. Post oak is. I don't like post oak. It's too strong of a woody flavor. Same with mesquite. Right. Yeah. So I think the same. And they say, well, we, we have mesquite. And I go, okay, so you're you're burning a weed in a, yeah, in a exactly. smoker. So come on. So. This apple and maple have a kind of sugary and they have a good taste to them. Peaches, peaches down, down. Peach and pecan are good, too. Yeah, I want to try peach. I haven't got it yet. Not a lot of peach trees around. No, the, summit, no. the Clarkdale Fruit Farm. Clarkdale. And Clarkdale will let you, they will, you can work with them. They yeah. they do. And uh, cherry, but you gotta be careful because cherry gets too dark. Mm -hmm. The with the, the oh, yeah. see now we degraded into. All right, <laughs> so all right, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, work with Andrew. Put something together for us, please. Yep. Thank you, Andrew, for your understanding. Andrew, can you just give me your email so okay. I can send you that letter? And talk all right. Because I don't think next up that one. Um, you got the whole hearing. Whole hearing. Do we do this without Eversource president? No. Okay. So I, I don't think they should be here. They should be. I've been paying attention to the Zoom meeting. No one's joined. So. Yeah. No, I have to. Let's scratch it out. You don't need to recuse yourself, right? No. Not if no one's here. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to have it. Definitely not if no one's here. Should yeah. we... I believe, and I'll double check this, but if we open the hearing, thank you. You are. Um, you don't have to post it again? Right. And yep. continue it. That All would right. save us a newspaper posting. All mm -hmm. right. So uh, I'll open the poll hearing. 715. You got your readings. So you have to post that in the newspaper, right? Yes. Do you want me to read it? Or yep. Or should we have the clerk? Yep. Um, 
Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Sunderland, poll hearing notice for petition for joint or identical poll locations. On petition of NSTAR Electric Company, DBA, Eversource Energy, and Verizon New England, Inc., the Sunderland Select Board will conduct a poll hearing on Monday, October 24th, 2022, at 7 p.m. Um, with uh, remote participation with Zoom ID 612-78025. Zoom call in 415-762-9988. Um, or join https colon slash 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 backslash backslash thank you backslash backslash zoom dot us backslash j backslash six one two seven eight zero two five three eversource is requesting permission to locate a line of poles wires cables and fixtures including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures to be owned and used in common by your petitioners along with Sorry, along and across the following public way. Location, Eversource requests permission to install one jointly owned pole at 136 Russell Street. Reason, to bring power further into the property at 136 Russell Street. Also for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables and wires in the above or intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. There is no existing pole being removed, and this is not part of a larger capital project. Thomas D. Feidenkevitz, Select Board Chair, October 14th. Okay. So at this time, I, open, I will we uh, open the hearing, and I'll ask for a... Uh, hmm. You know, we can't ad adjourn. Can't Can ask you? for... Huh? Continue the hearing. To a continuation. Yep. Okay, so I uh, entertain a motion to continue. I motion we continue until our next scheduled select board meeting. Seconded. Motion made, seconded to uh, continue our poll hearing until our next scheduled select board meeting. All I those in favor, question by saying aye. Oh wait, before Sorry. we. I think also you need to specify the time. I believe. Okay, to all, our next scheduled select board meeting at 7 p.m. Thank you. Seconded. I've never heard that one before. What? Well, the, the, the time? I, I yeah. But I've never, had, I've never been stood up for a poll hearing before. You, can make, you, might have, you may want to mention that to uh, Eversource. All right, so we have a motion made and seconded to uh, uh, continue until our next scheduled meeting at 7 p.m. So our next scheduled meeting is next week. What's the date? Uh, October 31st. Ooh, Halloween. October 31st, 7 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. Can we come in costumes next week? We're not now. <laughs> come on then. I want to vote on things as Darth Vader. It'll be fun. Okay. ARPA request. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there are two listed, but um, one, the police booking room PC was withdrawn. The police think that they found another source of funds. Okay. Um, so the one item is repairing the public safety complex facade. Over the entrance to the public safety complex, there is... Um, I don't know. It was three foot wooden thing that the it says Sunderland Police and Fire Department in wooden letters. The wooden I don't even know what it's called. Uh, overhang maybe is rotted out. It's made of wood um, and needs to be replaced. Uh, and so they they got a quote to remove the rotted wood, put up something new with either pressure treated wood or something that looks like wood that won't rot. Um, and then put the sign back up, paint it, put the sign back up. What's the dollar amount they're asking? $4,086.30. Okay. $4,100. $4,100, okay. Okay, any discussion? Nathaniel, anything? Um, just, uh, I would 
highly suggest that they go with something non-wood at all that's going to last super long. So. Well, it would be the first thing they did on the public safety complex that would last, unfortunately. So if that if that's a directive, then you probably should not vote on it because I think this quote would change if the material and labor changed. So I'm not sure it's a directive, just a suggestion. <laughs> I'll see if they can substitute material. For well, the that's I thought you said it would be wood or something similar. Yeah, I, th I think like the I, I think it was described like the deck tracks stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that stuff is great. Yeah, but. I'm not 100% sure. They can always come back to us and ask us. So I, I, I'd entertain a motion for $4,100. Up to 4100 Well, the price was $4,096.30. I want so my $3 do want back. to give them a little wiggle room? <laughs> I'm saying $3.70 wiggle, yeah. That's all you're giving them? Yeah. What do you all think? right. Well, I was going to go higher, but just... Well, if you want to go higher, go ahead. Well, no, just so... Right, because we've been there before, right? Where we did something for seven thousand dollars and it came back slightly yeah. over that. So say, give a number. And I, I believe at the beginning we had a conversation about this too, and you said, "Hey, if it's within that range, we are okay with plus with or minus the town ten. administrator approving it." You know, as long right. as it's so. Can we do like a plus or minus ten percent or yeah, something say, like that? Say forty five hundred. All right, that'd I make a motion. That'd be ten percent. Yeah, I just hate someone having to come back for something small. All right, I motion that I'm we... Take it out of the town administrator budget. <laughs> as long as it's not the salary. As long as it's not salary. There you go. I wouldn't want it out of mine either. I motion we grant them up to $4,500 in ARPA funds to repair the Field facade, facade for where the sign is for the safe public safety complex. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. Any questions, Jeffrey? Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Uh, select board updates. Um, had a village center committee meeting this last week. God, the weeks get away from me. Last week, um, Talking about, you know, just some things that have been hanging out there for a while, pending for a while. Okay. I had a series of capital planning meetings, one for town and one for Frontier. Uh, it is grim. Everything is more expensive than it was when we got original quotes. Everything's going to get more expensive by the time they do work. Um, one of the things that did come up that uh, we decided to, that would be good for me to bring before you is our understanding is there's currently... Uh, so money set aside for capital planning that started at 100000 and increases by some percentage per year and is somewhere in the $125,000 range. Um, and the capital, the Sunderland Capital Committee um, would, would wonder if it's possible to increase that amount due to all capital projects are taking more money and what our 10-year plan looks at is every year is going to be above what our budget is for it. Um, so rather than having to come back to the town again and again and again and again and again and again, saying every year, hey, we're, we're needing more money for this, we're needing more money for that, to just budget for that in the long run and increase it from the 125 or so that it is now up to two or 300,000. Um, beyond that, um, it might also make sense to think about bundling a lot of capital projects that are coming, going to be coming up in the next couple of years and getting a bond to do the work. Um, all projections look like anything that we are getting quotes on today is going to just be more expensive every year that we wait. Um, so in terms of total long-term cost to town and whatnot, something that we want, might want to do in the next five years, we might want to do right now. Um, so have they, Nathaniel, have they, have they engaged any professional to come up, start looking at numbers and or design for what they're thinking of doing? So a lot of the projects have to do with the roofs of the two buildings. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done both on the Frontier roof and on the Sunderland roof. Um, and so both of those plans already have, um, have engaged architects and or engineering firms or whoever comes up with the, the, the plan for that. Um, they have a pretty good plan 
to repair certain sections of the frontier roof moving forward every year for the next five years or so. Um, but it, both in terms of getting grants and whatnot, a lot of times it makes sense to bundle things together because you have a better shot at getting one big grant than a bunch of smaller grants. Um, and also, again, it, you know, we, went, we might pay <laughs> as much as twice as much for the last sections of roof as we're paying for the first sections of roof if we're talking about prices increasing the way that it's projected to increase over the next five to ten years. So, food for thought. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. Um, anything else? Uh, Franklin Council Regional Government, we had a meeting last Thursday. Um, it was interesting, and I brought the documentation from the meeting. Jeff will get it scanned and sent out to, you know, just things. Um, they they had a, a quick um, thing for Bill Perlman that's been in, he's from Ashfield, that's been involved with FERCOG for, for the last 25 years, and so he's stepping He's stepping away now. He's 75 years old. So I don't know if it's stepping away or rolling away, but uh, Bill, well, Bill's a funny guy. Um, so he's, he's stepping away, so they had a little um, recognition of that. They also rec recognized uh, Maureen Mulaney, who, who, who did a, it was funny in a way because they did a, um, a kind of, um, collage mosaic of a lot of the projects that that she worked on in the town of Sunderland or in the Franklin County and there was a number of projects that that were from the town of Sunderland um, including 116 where they did it and we did 116 in front of uh, um, Frontier Pizza that area that plaza right there so th it was uh, it was a interesting discussion but the FERCOG is also trying to define redefine now it's been in business for 25 25 years it's trying to redefine or define itself to move forward so I, I think they're kind of struggling a little bit with that because they're they're being pulled in a lot of directions and I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing because I think the FERCOG was supposed to help the, com the help the communities in in a, you know the, and and that's and that help can can always be changing, and I think the most successful thing that the FERCOG does is it responds to a request by a town for for assistance in a, in certain ways, and and we've done it a lot here, Jeff. You you've seen it in your your three years here, I mean. And, and I think, and I don't, I, I, I don't want them to lose that. I, I don't want them to be too, so black and white that they get so, they get so, you have to fall within a certain lines on a piece of paper. I, I want, I think FERCOG, and, and one thing was a co their COVID response. I think their COVID response was wonderful and, and how they picked up a, there was a, a need and they they fought and and they picked up like they were able they bought uh, PPE for towns were having a problem but all of a sudden when the fur cog got together and they wanted to buy in bulk because now they're buying for 27 town they could get people to talk to them you know and so maybe a town like um, Leverett couldn't get any couldn't get PPE or Charlemont or or some of those other communities, but when all of a sudden the FERCOC could get it. So I, I, I would hope that they don't change too much. Um, so they, they, we, we continue we continue to talk about that. Plus I think they're going to be they're very well they're, they've been funding OPED very well over the last three or four years. Um, and they're, they got some retirements coming up. Uh, of their senior management that they're they're looking at, uh, um, you know how how those replacements are going to go forward. But I mean, you did in one of the pages you're going to see is actually what how much control what the what the FERCOG council controls is only a small portion of the total cog because they get 
a boatload of grants. Um, so to talk about that, um, I would um, Saturday there was a uh, vaccination clinic that was run by Deerfield, Sunderland, Whiteley, Conway, um, and on Monday we didn't know. I think there's only like about 125 people signed up, and we ended up with 743 vaccinations on Saturday. So, um, and most most people were. Um, very appreciative, and in, in the in the lines moved. It was a drive-through, so the lines moved pretty pretty well. Um, so I'd like to thank all of the people that helped and volunteered at that, because the assistant really really made a difference. I, I would say that, um, it's a, and I don't necessarily like talking about COVID, but I, I would hope people realize that um, you're responsible for your your health. And if you see something that you don't like, um, about it, don't don't pass that response. No different than if you get on an airplane today, and the they, the first announcement they make is that look, there's no longer any federal mandate that you have to wear a mask on an airplane. But if you so choose to wear a mask, go ahead and wear a mask, and everybody should support a, a large family. And his wife lives in town. I'd like to pass on the board's condolences to Roy, and to thank him for. And again, a lot of people that may not be involved fail to realize how many, how many things a lot of our business owners do that they want no recognition for, but they're always there uh, for donations and um, help when you need it. And Roy was another one of those guys. So. And, and Barry as well. So again, condolences to both Barry and to Roy. I think that's about it tonight, Jeff, except for town administrator updates. Yep, just a couple of things. Um, one, I received a recommendation from the highway superintendent to increase snow and ice wages. Is that something you want to take up next week? Uh, Why, how, would we, how would we up the wages? What we're paying um, non-employees to help plow. Yeah, but but what what are you, are you saying? What we'd offer for an hourly rate? Yes. Hmm. I didn't know we did that. We do. We do. Okay. Go ahead. Do you want to talk to the highway super? No, I I I never I don't ever remember setting a wage rate for. Snow and ice, ever. 20, it's possible 20, that 23 years, that seven, we haven't five months, set and thirty. Rate. He asked me, and I said, I, I would ask the select board. <laughs> um, but if, if he doesn't, if I, no, we can. Well, go, go ahead. Okay. Uh, and I will say no. How's that? That's it. Right? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Um, now we know where you stand. Huh? That's it. It's been unanimous all night. We gotta have a little okay. controversy. Um, current rates are nineteen dollars and twenty-seven cents an hour. Uh, the highway super is requesting to increase that to twenty-two dollars an hour, um, and noted that it's been at least three years because it hasn't happened since I've been here um, that the rates have been at nineteen and a quarter-ish. Now, is he suggesting that? just because he feels like it should be more or is there uh, uh, something driving it like he's having a hard time finding people to sign up at the lower rate it, it's a combination of both i think he paused it during covid when we weren't sure what budgets were going to look like um and speaking to him he was i think he found one person to help um plow during storms and that's I'd say the bare minimum that he wants to have out there um, would be the three employees plus one more person. So he'd like to have at least one more. Now the 1950 or the 22 or whatever it is, um, is that coming out of already pre-approved budgets of his that he has money to be able to cover either way or is that something we would have to be able to throw more money at if it was approved? Yep, so the snow and ice budget is approved, um, but it is one of the few accounts that can be spent into deficit. Okay. Um, legislatively, so it's... You never know I what mean, you're going to get for snow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Something 
I don't think twenty two dollars an hour is whatever is a lot of money for for someone. No, I mean you drive. Seat. But and, and that's again, I don't understand. I, I I would and maybe the personnel committee needs to address that about how how the rates or wages are. Yeah, I mean you drive down ninety one and they're advertising for snowplow drivers, yeah, I, so. No, it's are we, gotta be an issue. Are we reimbursing for gas also, or are they paying gas out of pocket? If they're paying gas out of pocket, we better give no, them no, a raise. No, this is just the guys that we hire to drive our truck. Our trucks, okay. Our, our trucks. trucks. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I thought yeah, they're, they're not. They're not. That I thought we were hiring. We were farming out no, construction companies or something like that. We had we had someone that yelled at the the board one year or many years that we didn't lease that we he believed that we should be leasing our plow trucks. So one year we did, and we bought a new plow truck for the person that was leasing us the truck it cost us so much money so mm -hmm. so we don't do that no more yeah okay we buy our trucks use most of the time oh, it was like we sixty sixty five thousand dollars a lease was for one year I'm in the wrong business man you're in the wrong business my friend <laughs> and that was like 15 years ago so that was that sixty thousand was a lot of money yeah that was a that was a cost of a new truck. A new truck we could have got for like fifty thousand at the time. But we we're gonna save money. Yeah. Well, live and learn. All right. So you need a motion. If Crystal? you don't think you need to. I, I I don't understand how. Well, again, I don't know. But we we can. I I would say it would just be part of our salary schedule, right? Yeah. So, but that. Yeah. So maybe it was last time they were doing salary planning. They didn't I, realize. We'll take a move. I'm not sure we increase the plow driver. Is that snow and snow ice wages? Ice. Snow and ice wages. The second, I'm, I, I think I'd give him a just. You just want a call. You want yeah. right? Yeah. And they they do all kinds of stuff. So I I don't know if specifically they do that, but I would. And if not, they'd probably be able to help. Maybe right, get you in the right ballpark, Jeff. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. I motion we adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff 30, tall us out at uh, 745.